Welcome to Shrewsbury News, brought to you by TheDailyShrewsbury.com. Hi, I'm Lindsay Corcoran from TheDailyShrewsbury.com, and this is your weekly news. Shrewsbury residents narrowly voted down a debt exclusion to fund the Shrewsbury Public Library building project in the special town election on Tuesday. The $18.3 million project was voted down by a narrow margin with 51.2% against and 48.7% for. Of the total votes, 3,158 voted no and 3,000 voted yes. Turnout for the election was relatively low with only 27% of registered voters heading to the polls. Construction on the new Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union building is underway on the corner of Route 9 and Lake Street and is set to open there next fall. The credit union will be leaving its current location on 615 Main Street as the town purchased the land for $680,000 earlier this year. An exact date for the move has not been set, but credit union officials say the project is on track and expect to move sometime in the fall of 2012. New maps released this week by the Special Joint Committee on Redistricting will shuffle state Senate and House districts in the Central Mass region, but will have no effect on Shrewsbury. State Rep Matt Beaton's 11th Worcester District will continue to contain the entire town of Shrewsbury, as well as precincts 4 and 5 in Westboro. In Senate redistricting, State Senate Senator Mike Moore retains the bulk of the current 2nd Worcester District, continuing to represent Shrewsbury among others, but will also pick up a part of Northbridge. A clothesline project featuring shirts created by survivors telling their story is being organized around town this week by the Against Domestic Violence in Shrewsbury Education Program, ADVISE. Advise is a small but vocal nonprofit in town that works to raise awareness on the issue of domestic violence. Last year, they held a candlelight vigil to remember victims. The clothesline is the first of many that will be displayed around town this week as a way to reach different groups of people. Richard D. Carney, known as Mr. Carney most commonly, was remembered by the droves of Shrewsbury residents at calling hours on Monday as the man who made Shrewsbury what it is today. Carney died at the age of 84 last Friday in his Southgate home following an illness. Not only was Kearney well respected within the town, but also across the state. He remains the longest serving town manager for a single town in the entire Commonwealth, having dedicated 41 years of service to Shrewsbury. physical response. It's an organic thing. Color's like an extra emotion. It's a learned experience. It's alive. Many good things are easy to spot, even in black and white. A maple leaf, birds in flight, our trees in summer. But there's one bad thing that's also easy to spot because it is black and white the Asian longhorn beetle. This insect is killing our trees, but with your help, we can defeat it. It's as simple as black and white. Look for the beetle, and if you spot it, report it at beetlebusters.info. State officials decided on Monday to expand the Asian longhorn beetle regulated area to cover the entire town of Shrewsbury after eight more infested trees were found on Bryant Avenue. No wood material will be transported outside the regulated area in order to prevent the ALB from spreading. When Ornella Biseglia moved to Shrewsbury from Russia nine years ago, holding her two-month-old baby Laura in her arms, she had no idea how the cultural differences in economy would end up affecting her life. Biseglia and her daughter, both deaf, currently live in Shrewsbury at the Avalon Way. They will be the recipients of the newest Habitat for Humanity house, which broke ground in Worcester on Saturday morning. At the groundbreaking, Biseglia spoke of her gratitude at being selected to receive the new home. Since his fatal car accident last December, Andy Reese's best friends have devoted themselves to continuing his legacy of community service by donating to the nonprofit set up by Andy's parents, Andy's Attic. Andy's Attic collects clothing for schools and social service agencies to distribute to needy teenagers and was set up by, the Reese's, by Reese's parents, Lisa and Daryl after their son died in a Boylston car accident on December 7, 2010. 
His best friends, Kyle Puzar and Sean Gray, have been raising money and collecting clothes for the organization since the beginning of the school year and presented a check to the Reese's on Friday. To see more, visit thedailyshrewsbury.com. I'm Lindsay Corcoran, and this has been your weekly news. To see these stories and much more, visit thedailyshrewsbury.com. Be sure to tune in to SPAC 28 again next Thursday at 7 and 10 p.m. Thanks for watching.